the economics of digging tunnels, the Boeing company. So we're going to talk about digging holes in the ground today and a company called the Boeing company. Yeah, I know you can't wait for it either. But on a serious note, there are actually some quite interesting economic aspects to digging holes in the ground. Also, the machines used to do it have been needing a breakthrough for quite a while. Especially when you take a look at how this industry of digging holes has worked historically. You see, whenever you want to dig a long tunnel, you typically want to use something big, powerful, and that can last a long time. This would in most cases be a perfect job for a TBM, or more commonly known as a tunnel boring machine, since the TBM, implied by the name, digs tunnels. But the problem with these TBMs is that they break down easily, don't dig continuously and run on diesel, which requires a complex ventilation system. All of this makes digging tunnels slow, expensive and sometimes dangerous. So one day, Elon Musk was sitting in traffic in LA and wondered what he could do so he wouldn't have to be stuck in soldiers running traffic ever again. So he came up with an idea that consisted of creating long tunnels under LA that could transport people and cars around. The only problem, digging tunnels were expensive, so he decided to create a company to do something about that. Which I feel like we have seen him do in another industry before. Hmm, I don't know. And if they can achieve what they have set out to achieve, we could have another disruptive company created by Elon Musk on our hands. So let's dig a little deeper into the Boeing company, see what they are working on and what impacts it could have on our lives. So why tunnels? Well, if you want to eliminate traffic, you either need flying cars or tunnels. Tunnels are the best option because of a few things. Unlimited capacity. There is no practical limit to how many layers of tunnels can be built so any current or future capacity outcome can be achieved. This flexibility contrasts with a surface system, where adding a lane to the road is often difficult and expensive. Minimal land use. Tunnels minimize the use of valuable surface land. Tunnels also do not conflict with currently operating transporting systems, such as roads and sidewalks. Minimal surface impact. Tunnel construction and operation do not create any surface noise or vibration. Rain, snow, wind and surface temperatures do not affect system operation. Future expansion. For the reasons listed above, it is much simpler to extend a tunnel-based system than a surface-based system. So now we know why we need tunnels, but now the problem is with building them. And interestingly, digging tunnels today is about 14 times lower than a snail. So the vision for the boring company is to beat the snail. Currently, it takes about 8 to 12 weeks to dig a one mile long tunnel. But I guess the worst part is the price. Usually, tunnel projects will cost in the range of 100 million to around 1 billion per mile. So how do we make it faster and simultaneously cheaper? Well, first rip out the diesel engine and put in an electric engine instead. This is done for many reasons, but the main ones are the fact that you can now have a much simpler ventilation system. Another thing is that the electric engine can run at much higher RPMs efficiently, which means they can increase the power output without having to sacrifice longevity. The next thing you do is you make the TBM much smaller, in fact 30 to 60% smaller than standard transportation tunnel diameters. You can do this because only autonomous electric vehicles are supposed to go through the tunnels, which, as you know, decreases the need for a complex ventilation system. The next thing you do is you standardize tunnel sizes and therefore TBMs, which means you can now use economics of scale to manufacture these TBMs. This means you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you go for a new tunnel boring project. Another thing you do is reinforce the tunnel simultaneously with digging, which means the TPM can run continuously, which is the main limiting factor on today's TPMs when it comes to speed. Usually, you would have to stop mining every 5 feet to reinforce a tunnel, which is not necessary if you install it simultaneously with mining. The next thing you do is repurposing the dirt you're mining into bricks that can either build the tunnel or build affordable housing. 
And then you eliminate the need for making a TBM launch pit by making the TBM able to do a surface launch. Instead, Proofrock, the Boeing company's third gen Boeing machine, arrives on a truck, tilts down and is mining within 48 hours. The last thing you do is eliminate rails and rail based locomotives. Instead, you utilize rubber wheel segment trucks. This eliminates the time consuming rail installation and maintenance, along with certain safety hazards. Okay, so now we understand how the TBM is better than anything that had come before it. Great. But what types of tunnels would they offer? Well, they have different types of tunnels for different use cases, but the most apparent one is Loop. Loop is an electric zero emissions high speed underground public transportation system in which passengers are transported via compatible autonomous electric vehicles, also called AEVs, at up to 150 miles per hour through main artery tunnels between stations. AEVs are test vehicles such as Model S, 3, X, Y and the upcoming Cybertruck that operate autonomously within the Loop system. Other tunnels include a water tunnel which is self-explanatory, or a conduit tunnel, which makes it easier to maintain multiple utilities such as a water tunnel and fiber optic cables. So we have talked about all the things that make the TBM special and what types of tunnels they will make, but what projects will they use it for? And will it be competitive with other means of transport? Well, currently they have created a test tunnel in California in the SpaceX parking lot to test out their first TBM. It's about a mile long, but it's not as interesting as the project they are currently working on in Las Vegas. That project will be a full on loop system to transport people from different parts of the Las Vegas Convention Center. It's an interesting project that will cut the travel time currently achieved by walking from 15 minutes to only one minute in the loop system. Other projects that are planned for the future include one more in Los Angeles, California, that would transport baseball fans and concert goers directly to the Dodger Stadium from the Los Feliz East Hollywood or Rampart Village neighborhoods. The last project they have currently announced is a loop that goes from Washington DC to Baltimore. Okay, so they have a few projects planned, but will the Boring Company's products be price competitive with other means of public transport? The answer is yes, if they can get the cost down to below 10 million per mile, which they imply that they definitely could, it would directly compete with the likes of highways, obviously only in urban areas where loop is basically the only option since you can't build out more highways in densely populated cities. So the only option is to dig underground and doing so enables a practically limitless system of loop tunnels, meaning your city would never experience traffic jams ever again. But what about the Boeing Company's direct competitors that also dig tunnels? Well, I thought it would be fun to compare it to a recently completed project here in Denmark. It's called the City Ring. It took them 10 years to build it. It was 10 miles long and the cost was approximately $389 million per mile. Yes, they also built 17 metro stations aside from the tunnels, but if the Boeing company could make the tunnels for less than 100 million and the total cost of the project was 3.89 billion, they would have at least a couple pennies left over to build those metro stations. This just goes to show how much governments around the world are spending on infrastructure and are willing to pay for it. It's funny that Elon Musk already has a company called SpaceX that undercuts the competition drastically and launches to space, so much so that they can artificially higher the price so it fits right under the competition. This means they get all the contracts from governments and private companies whilst getting immense amounts of profits. They could do the same thing with the boring company and expand the company rapidly, but they need to get their proof rock into manufacturing so they can build all these infrastructure projects and we don't know how far that machine is in the future, but my guess is we are very close. This has been it for this video, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the boring company and while you are down there, press the subscribe button if you would like to see more of my content in the future. It's free and you can always unsubscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.